Okay, we'll come back to her. David Wolf is absent. Randy Hudgens is absent. Darren Schaefer. Here. Rebecca Barton. Here. Brian Walker. Here. And Jason Cooper. Here. Let's try Donna Getzman again on Zoom. Here. Okay, very good. We have corn. Okay, thank you. And would you be so kind and read the statement for hybrid in-person virtual meeting, please? Sure. This meeting is now being recorded. Please silence all electronic devices. The meeting is being held in the board hearing room with zoning board members attending in person. There is also an option for virtual attendance on Zoom webinar. If you are using Zoom, you may participate in the meeting using your computer, telephone, or other electronic device. For Zoom participants, chat will be disabled once the meeting begins. If you have trouble, please call 913-715-1700. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function in the Zoom app to notify planning staff of your desire to speak. To activate this function, click raised hand in the webinar controls at the bottom of the screen. By telephone, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Please do not utilize the raise hand function until the start of the agenda item about which you desire to comment. We will take comments from in-person attendees first, followed by Zoom participants. The Zoom moderator will call on individuals who have raised their hand. The chairman may modify these procedures as needed to conduct an orderly and efficient meeting. All public speakers will be limited to three minutes unless the chair designates a different time period in order to accommodate all the speakers. When your name is called by the moderator, use your, mic uh, your microphone will be unmuted. Please state your name and address for the record, followed by your comments. If you share concerns, comments, or points made by others, please refrain from repeating those comments and instead note for the record that you agree with the previous individual's comments. There will be a 10 seconds remaining warning sound. For board members and presenters, please state your name every time you begin talking so that the comments can be transcribed for the record. This is a public meeting. We are presenting live and recording the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, we're moving on to the agenda items this evening. Do we have any additions, deletions, or revisions to the agenda? I do have one. Uh, I'm going to need a motion to add election of officers towards other or at the end with other business. So do I have a motion? Terry Atwell moved to add that to our agenda. I have a second? Michael Please. Barton, second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion passes. Do we have any disclosure of conflicts of interest? None. 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 Noted. Any disclosure of external contacts, discussions? None. None. All right. Approval of minutes. Has everybody had a chance to look over the minutes from our last meeting back in July? And if so, do I have a motion for approval? Jason Cooper, move to approve the minutes. I have a motion made. Do I have a second? Brian Walker, second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. A motion passes. And Mr. Penley, I believe you're going to do board reports, Board of County Commissioner's actions. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, members of the Zoning Board, Sean Penley, County Planning Staff. I uh, wanted to update the board on one application that was previously scheduled um, for the Zoning Board, if you recall, the Amazon Preliminary and Final Development Plan located at 27200 West 157th Street, New Century Air Center. There was a proposal for a preliminary, a revised preliminary development plan and final development plan for that warehouse site. The applicant has withdrawn that application, so uh, that will not be uh, returning to the board uh, for that pending application. The applicants indicated that they, uh, at this time, do not have plans to move forward with any change to the site and any development. And if they do come back, that would require a separate application and public hearing. So if it, it is resubmitted, it will go through a new public hearing process and we'll start over. I uh, also wanted to mention for Board of County Commissioners actions, 
the preliminary and final plat for 175th and Edgerton Road that was recommended for approval by this board was approved by the Board of County Commissioners on September 1st. So that's uh, updates for Board of County Commissioners. Uh, Sean, Terry Atwell, on that Amazon one, do you know why they've uh, withdrawn that? Is it because... They indicated they do not have any plans to move forward with any exterior changes to the site. If you recall, they had plans for a parking lot expansion, uh, road extension, and there's no need for that at this time. The work that they're doing is all interior on the existing building um, for work that they're doing on that facility. If and when they do move forward with uh, changes to the site development plan, that would require a new, a new plan. They would come back in and submit new application. Well, I was just wondering if they were having conflicts with trying to work out the issues between the neighbors. Not that I know of. They, I, they, we asked about that. We were trying to get an update from the applicant as to the status of what they were, if they had been meeting with the neighbors on, regarding the stormwater drainage issues. They had not had any meetings. I think it just was a function of everything that they were doing. They were not needing to move forward with the change to their site development. I think that was really the, the reason why they just wanted to put a hold on it, but they did indicate that they likely may come back in the future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, planning commission activities. Uh, yes. Thank you, chairman. Um, Sean Penley planning staff for planning commission activities. There's not much. Uh, the meeting that was scheduled for this month in October has been canceled. However, uh, the next meeting we do anticipate uh, items for the November planning commission meeting and that meeting date is actually going to be uh, changed. We rescheduled that meeting from no November 22nd to November 29th to get past the Thanksgiving holidays. So there will be a planning commission meeting on November 29th. That's it for planning commission. Thank you. Business before the board this evening. Letter A, application number SW22-253-CUPGA, conditional use permit 26125. West 207th Street. Ms. Wickler. Good evening. Uh, Diane Wickler, Planning Department. I'm going to get the uh, graphics up here. Um, so I would like to enter in uh, the staff report uh, dated uh, October 19th, 2022 into the record. Um, the applicant and landowners are um, Tony and Kathleen Black. Uh, the property address is 26125 West 207th Street. Uh, the property has rural zoning and uh, it has a single family residence and accessory structures um, on, on site. Um, and the site size is 8.7 acres. Uh, the applicant, applicant uh, is requesting a conditional use permit uh, to exceed the number of accessory structures allowed by right on the property. Uh, the regulations limit the number of accessory structures on lots less than 10 acres in size uh, to a maximum of three. Uh, so more than three accessory structures on the property uh, may be allowed if a conditional use permit is, is granted for that. Um, so uh, this request would allow four accessory structures on the property. Um, and uh, the applicant is requesting the CUP uh, because he's wanting to rebuild, replace an existing barn um, that was significantly, uh, significantly damaged uh, last year in a windstorm. Uh, prior to that windstorm, the property did have uh, four accessory structures on the property. Um, the four accessory structures, um, if the CUP is approved, would be the, the new proposed uh, 1,280 square foot barn uh, that's being uh, replaced and re, uh, rebuilt for, uh, after, for the existing uh, larger barn. Um, an existing 11,000, uh, 1,180 square foot horse barn an existing 439 square foot chicken house and a uh, existing 264 foot square foot uh, machine shed. Uh, so that total square footage of those detached accessory structures um, 
uh, just to note, is under that maximum square footage that's allowed for um, uh, on parcels that are uh, less than 10 acres in size. Uh, we have that formula for that, if you remember. Um, so, so this uh, conditional use permit um, is only to allow the four accessory structures on the property, um, and it is not for an oversized accessory structure. So just wanted to make that clear. <clears throat> All the accessory structures on the property do comply uh, with the setback and height requirements uh, per the regulations, and uh, they will be used for personal uh, use and storage. Um, and so just to kind of go through the graphics real quick, here's the uh, uh, vicinity map that shows the uh, property along 207th Street, uh, just east of Cedar Niles Road. Um, this is a, a close-up view of subject property. Uh, you can see the three accessory structures there where I have uh, pointed to them with arrows. And then um, that larger, uh, most southern structure is the, uh, going to be replacing that barn that was uh, damaged in the windstorm. Um, here is just an aerial view of the adjacent area. The Red star indicates uh, kind of generally where the accessory structures are at on the property. And then here's an aerial view of kind of a zoomed out view of the surrounding area and the subject property is outlined in blue. Um, here is uh, two of the four accessory structures. So this is the um, existing machine shed and the chicken shed. Here's a picture of the existing horse barn. Um, so that's the third accessory structure. And then um, this will be the fourth uh, structure, which will be the new uh, proposed accessory structure that's replacing that existing uh, barn that was demolished in the storm. And then just here's, here's the site plan showing that it meets setbacks. Uh, we reviewed uh, minimum infrastructure and the uh, existing infrastructure is ad adequate for the proposed accessory structure. Uh, we did do a golden review, um, as we always do for conditional use permits. And um, uh, so the accessory structures, having four on the property, will have minimal, uh, if any, detrimental effects to the nearby parcels. Um, and compatible with the neighborhood and the surrounding uh, uses um, for, for some of the following reasons. One is uh, distance and screening uh, from the nearby homes. Uh, the accessory structures are at least 182 feet away from the street and towards the back and center of the property. Uh, they uh, close um, in the proposed uh, new structure is about 348 feet from the street. Uh, the size of the property, which is 8.7 acres, um, and that the uh, accessory structures are consistent in terms of um, architectural style and building permits uh, with the existing uh, accessory structures in the area. And um, the closest accessory structure is about 280 feet away from the house that's located um, on the property adjacent uh, to the west. Uh, in addition, the subject property, as you can see on the aerials, um, has several trees on the property, which also helps um, mitigate the view of the accessory structures. Uh, in terms of county departments and other agency comments, um, so the building code official uh, did uh, reviewed it, the application, and just um, stated that the, the new building will require a building permit. Uh, you uh, can see in the back of the packet, there's a memo from the Public Works Department. And then um, from the Environmental Department, they, um, they did do a, a review of the um, location of the existing septic system and, uh, and uh, the proposed location of that new accessory structure uh, does comply with the uh, requirements for the environmental department. Uh, so uh, with that, planning staff does recommend approval of the uh, conditional use permit um, subject to the stipulations uh, listed on page 10. 
And uh, one of them includes a term of 20 years. And then the uh, reasons for recommendation of approval are on page 11, along with a, uh, a suggested motion uh, for the board's reference, if, if you want to use that uh, later. Uh, I think with that, I'll stop. If you have any questions, I can answer those. Yeah. Uh, Terry Atwell. With, uh, if you include their easement, all the easement area, how, how close or did you not calculate it? Would they get to the nominal 10 acres? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, I so the property has rural zoning and you're correct. So with that rural zoning, um, if you can include the right of way area, and and then you know if you can get up to ten acres, that's great. Um, I yes, I did calculate that, and um, uh, I was trying to show a picture here. Uh, and so the right of way area uh, that Miss Atwell is talking about, is kind of here. If you can see my crosshairs here and here, and uh, that only got him up to like nine point one acres, so, so still a little short. So unfortunately, because that would have solved the issue and they wouldn't have had to get a conditional use permit, but still a little shorts. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cause it just looks like for, I mean, I can't really see, there's a lot of parcels out there that are surrounding it that <laughs> do meet that. So, um, you know, it looks yep. like just the kind of the piano key ones don't, mm -hmm. um, you know, and my thought was if it was close enough, you're looking at these other parcels and they could fill the whole parcel with, you know, buildings because they're the nominal 10 and it, mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping it would get there, but thank you. Yep. Is the uh, applicant present? And you may present or you may agree with what Ms. Wickland uh, <laughs> Any board members have any questions? The public, the public here that would like to talk on this matter. Discussion? Thank you. Ryan Walker, I move that the board approve application number SW22253 CUP uh, to allow four accessory structures on the property for the reasons and stipulations recommended by staff and set forth in the staff report. John DeGrand, I'll second. Aye. Aye. Uh, yes, so this will go to the Board of County Commissioners on December 1st, uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, in this room, 111 South Cherry, Olathe. Oh, yeah. You're okay, yeah, you're my tuner. I couldn't hear you very well. Ms. Getzman, are you available? Yes, I am. I wasn't hearing you before. Yeah, I had my microphone turned off, so okay. that's my fault. And were you a yes on that motion to approve that first? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Sherry, for pointing that out. I turned it off and I forgot to turn it back on. Okay, next business before the board, letter B, application number SW22-254-PP slash FPMC, preliminary and final plat, 167th Street and Evening Star Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Southwest Consolidated Zoning Board, Michelle Crooks with Johnson County Planning. 
Uh, this evening, I'd like to enter into the public record a staff report for case number SW22254 PPFP MC, a request for approval for a preliminary and final plat for two residential lots on 40.2 acres located at the southwest corner of 167th Street and Evening Star Road in the McCamish Township. This lot was part of a previous administrative lot split and therefore for the lot divisions uh, would require platting, which is why this project is before the board this evening. And based on the findings of the staff report entered into the public record, Johnson County planning staff is recommending approval of this application subject, subject to stipulations. And uh, we'll go through the project now. Sorry, my this wasn't working. So this is my next slide there. Uh, so the subject property, as I noted, is located um, at the southwest corner of 167th and Evening Star Road. Uh, this is a vicinity map showing um, that we're almost out to the Douglas County line on 167th Street. Uh, the subject property and surrounding parcels are zoned RUR or Rural District. Uh, minimum lot sizes in the Rural District is 10 acres. So this table, which is in your staff report, does show how the plat proposed uh, would comply with the regulations of the rural district, such as the minimum lot area, uh, setbacks, and lot, lot depth to lot width ratio, of which uh, this plat does require or comply with all regulations. Um, I do want to note quickly for the record that there was a typographical error in the staff report table. Uh, in the rural district, the maximum lot depth to lot width ratio is 4.1 or 4 to 1, not 3 to 1, as it's noted in your staff report. Um, so it is uh, the requirement is reflected correctly on this slide. Uh, however, regardless of that error, the plat does meet the requirement of lot depth to lot width ratio for both lots. Uh, here's an aerial of the subject property uh, with the 167th Street and Evening Star Road. Um, highlighted here, both of those streets are 22 foot wide gravel roads with a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, this property is currently has a single family home, a 300 square foot utility shed, a 3,554 square foot greenhouse, a 4,670 square foot accessory building, and an 800 square foot building over by the pond. Uh, the pond is approximately three and a half acres and would remain entirely on lot two. Uh, the accessory building by the pond uh, would remain in place on the lot without a primary structure. Um, and in Article 18 of the regulations, accessory structures may be built and used without a primary structure in the rural district. So here's a copy of the preliminary plat uh, with the proposed layout. Uh, staff has reviewed the infrastructure requirements for the plat, uh, such as water, roads, sanitary sewer, and determined the plat meets all the requirements. The comprehensive arterial road network plan designates both streets as type one minor arterial streets. All road frontages for both lots exceeds, meet or exceed 600 feet, making them exempt from right-of-way dedication. Both lots meet the minimum street frontage for driveways. Therefore, a shared driveway would not be required. Uh, in addition, uh, since uh, both streets are type one arterials, driveways are required to be more than 600 feet from the intersection. And the plat does reflect this requirement by showing limits of no access on lot two, prohibiting driveways in the area uh, close to that intersection. Water to the property is served by Water District 7, and there's a hydrant located at the northwest corner of the property, and an additional hydrant is located approximately one half mile south on Evening Star Road. Oh, here's a copy of the final plat, and there's uh, the two lots just expanded, so it's a little bit more visible but a copy of the uh, plats are within the staff report as well. Uh, the Rural Comprehensive Plan indicates the subject property identified by the red star here on the slide as uh, the rural traditional policy area, which does allow one dense, a, a density of one dwelling unit per 10 acres. The proposed density of two lots on 40 acres is in keeping with the future land use recommendation of this plan. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending appro approval of the preliminary and final plat for two lot subdivision to be known as Morgan Acres, located at the southwest corner of 167th Street and Evening Star Road, subject to the stipulations outlined in your staff report. 
And uh, here's a recommended motion. Uh, if you choose to use this one, it's available for you. And with that, I'm available for questions. Staff? None. None. No. Okay, that noted. Thank you. And do we have an applicant present? Yes. Would you like to say anything or do you agree with staff? Okay, thank you. Any board members have questions for the applicant? None. Okay, none noted. Is there any discussion or would somebody like to? Oh yeah, public public comments. None noted. Any discussion from the board? I would like to make this motion. Uh, Terry Atwell. Uh, I move to approve application number SW22254PP slash FPMC, uh, the preliminary and final plat for the two residential lots to be known as Morgan Acres for the reasons and subject to the stipulations recommended by staff and listed in the staff report. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Jason Cooper, second. All those members in favor? Aye. 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 All those all those opposed, same sign. Okay, thank you. Motion does pass. Do we have a date? Dave, uh, I can list that date for Board of County Commissioners meeting is uh, December 1st, 9.30 a.m. And that meeting will be held in this room, in the uh, board meeting room, third floor, County Administration Building. Thank you. Next on the agenda, letter C, application number SW22-255-FDPGA, final development plan 570 Highland Drive. Mr. Penley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, zoning board members, Sean Penley, County Planning staff. This application is a request for a final development plan for a new airplane hangar at 570 Highland Drive in the new Century Air Center. Uh, the subject property is located on the west side of the airfield uh, adjacent to runway 36, and it's uh, with access to Highland Drive. The, uh, this is a vicinity map showing the site location. The uh, aerial map here identified, the subject property is identified in red. This is a uh, existing site is 1.2 acres zone PEC3 uh, industrial. And uh, as identified here on the vicinity map, there are existing hangars located to the north of this site. And again, this will have, uh, the site will have access to a new driveway on Highland Drive. The proposed development plan consists of a new hangar building, a taxiway, parking lot, and driveway. The proposed building in the hangar, the total building area is 14,463 square feet and includes an office area with approximately 2,500 square feet. The building meets all required setbacks from the lease boundaries, both for front yards, rear yard, and side yards. The development plan includes a total of 10 parking spaces for the hangar. The New Century Air Center preliminary development plan does not have any parking requirements for hangars and the zoning regulations do not have minimum parking requirements. However, there are requirements for number of employees and also minimum parking requirements for office areas. The, the applicant has indicated that there would be a maximum of 10 employees at any given time in the building. So it would meet that requirement. And based on the size of the office area, just under 2,500 square feet, based on an office area requirement, the proposed development with 10 parking spaces also meets that requirement. So the, the site is providing the adequate number of parking spaces. The proposed building design is consistent with other hangar buildings at New Century Air Center. The, the building will consist of pre-finished metal wall panels on all four sides of the building and a standing seam metal roof. This uh, elevations here um, show the north and south sides of the building. On the south elevation, there's indicated uh, an office area. As you see with the, uh, the glass and the, the walk-in doors, there will be a, a two-story office area on the side of the building. 
the north and or excuse me, the east and west elevations are identified in the following. The, uh, the east elevation facing the airfield will include a, a bifold um, hangar doors. The proposed building is approximately 30, 38 feet in height, which does comply with the maximum height requirements. Uh, there are comments included from other departments, including Public Works and Johnson County Wastewater. Uh, uh, Public Works Department uh, indicated that the final stormwater management and water quality plans were submitted and have been uh, accepted for the proposed development. Uh, there's no detention required for the development, but there are requirements for drainage and, and uh, water quality and best management practices, and all the required information was submitted and accepted by Public Works. Also, an entrance permit will be required on Highland Drive, a land disturbance permit will be required for the development, and a stormwater treatment facility permit are required prior to building permit. Um, Johnson County Wastewater, uh, I will also notice, note uh, they included comments which are included in the packet, and this, this site is required to have a commercial permit review and a service agreement with JCW, so those are included as stipulations. And, um, and there will also be a requirement for a sewer connection permit prior to building permit. Staff does recommend approval of the final development plan as indicated with the, the stipulations included in your report. Those are identified here. Uh, won't go through each individual one, but basically the requirements, uh, as, as I mentioned from Public Works, uh, there are also requirements for any signage who will have to uh, be in compliance with the zoning regulations and uh, preliminary development plan. And uh, the building shall comply with all applicable co codes. Uh, there is a suggested motion here included. Um, I'll note too that the applicant and representatives of the owner are here for any questions as well. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Mr. Penley. Members of the board have any questions for Mr. Penley? None. This is Darren Schaefer. Just out of curiosity, is that hangar just uh, built for one, one plane or jet? That or? would be a Good question for the applicant, but I believe it would accommodate one uh, aircraft, but I would let the applicant speak to the details of the okay. facility. We may want uh, the applicant to, to get that on record. We may want the applicant to come up to speak because we may not record that. Okay. Next section, I'll have you go up there and speak. And then any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Penley. Okay, at this time, uh, applicant, I guess you guys are with with the applicant. Okay, if you'll just step up here and state your name, please, and who you work for. Yes, thank you. I'm Brian Weber. I'm with Nexus 5 Group, the general contractor and the applicant for this project. Okay, and could you just kind of reiterate again? Uh, my question was, Darren Schaefer again, will that hangar hold more than one plane or jet or... It will hold more than one in the group two in the uh, AD, ADG, which is a classification type of size of airplanes. Okay. Over my head, but thank you. <laughs> and I also want to note that not only are we working in conjunction with the, the county and Johnson County Wastewater, but also the Johnson County Airport Commission and the FAA with all their regulations and requirements. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do any members have any questions for applicant? Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't think there's any public here, but I'll open it up to public if anybody wants to say anything. Okay, none noted. Do we want to have any discussion or does somebody like to make the motion? I believe that's on one of these pages. Becca Barton, I remove to recommend a approval of the final development plan for the airplane hangar on the subject property located at 570 Highland Drive with the stipulations and for the reasons outlined in the staff report. Pull your mic over and redo that. Yeah. yeah, it is on. I move to recommend approval a final development plan for an airplane hangar on the subject property located at 570 Highland Drive with the stipulations and for the reasons outlined in the staff report. Thank you. And do I have a second? Terry Atwell, second. All those board members in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. A motion does pass and a date for Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Chairman Sean Penley Planning. Uh, this application will be considered for final um, consideration by the Board of County Commissioners on December 1st at 9.30 a.m. in this room, the Board of County Commissioners hearing room.
Okay, thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Okay, the last thing on the agenda is other business and we do have election of officers. And how would we like to proceed on that? I will make, uh, I would like to make a nomination for chair at this time. I don't know if anybody else is interested, but I uh, nominate Jason Cooper for the chairman position. For the Harry Atwell second. Okay, motion has been made and second and all those, do we have any other? Uh, Ms. Getzman. That's fine with me. Okay. <laughs> Well, we could nominate you, Donna, because you're not here to defend. Hey, that's no fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those members in favor of uh, Jason Cooper becoming the new chair, aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, the motion passes. So, Jason, congratulations. You'll be the new chair of the Southwest Consolidated Zoning Board. And forgive me, but is the vice chair, is that Randy Hutchins? That is correct. Randy Hutchins is the current vice chair. Okay. Uh, we left messages with uh, Mr. Hutchins having her back, but I think it would be appropriate to also elect the uh, vice chair this evening as well. Okay. Is anybody, uh, is there any nominations for vice chair? I'm, I'm fine with Randy. I don't know if Randy is interested still or not. Or, or we can leave Randy. Does that mean I'm the chair? When he's uh -huh. yes. <laughs> You want a little more experience behind your belt before you do that? I don't mind. I've, I've been on plenty of boards if you'd like me to do that. <laughs> or we you stay with Randy. I mean, we might want to hear from Randy. Yeah, we would probably want Mr. Hutchins here if we are going to be nominating him again because he may not have an intent to remain. So I would suggest if uh, for anyone in attendance to actually be, uh, if we're going to nominate the vice chair, we'd want that person to be in attendance. So. Uh, because it it would be appropriate, I think, to because we do have to do this annually. So every year we're going to, and and one of the things I just wanted to know is, uh, staff, we will be bringing forward to the board uh, bylaws, and in those bylaws we'll have all the specifics. But we intend to have this; it'll be an annual election every year, uh, approximately June of every year. But yeah, I think it would be appropriate to nominate a new vice chair. Okay, Miss Atwell, did you have somebody you wanted to nominate? I sure do, okay. Terry Atwell. I want to nominate Brian Walker as our vice chair. John DeGrand, second. Okay, motion has been made. Uh, Mr. Walker, are you are you okay with that and being nominated? I am okay with that. Okay. All those members in favor of Mr. Walker becoming the vice chair, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Well, motion passes. Congratulations to you, Mr. Walker, for uh, vice chair. And I believe that's all of them, right? We don't that's, have that's it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank no you. Secretary of Arms or anything like that for <laughs> well, uh, nothing, no other no other changes. Yeah. No, no other elections. That's that will cover it. Yeah. Okay, last thing is adjournment. Do I have a uh before that I thought of this while we were going through the meeting, Brian Walker. Um, where are we on the bylaws or all of that? I thought we were going to talk about that this time. Yeah, Sean Penley, County Planning. We have uh, we're working with our legal department. They we are hoping to have that. I believe there. I was going to mention this too for our next meeting is scheduled for November thirtieth. Um, we do, I think, have at least one application that will be already scheduled on that meeting, maybe two. In addition, we do intend to bring forward the draft bylaws. We're uh, still working with the legal department on refining that. The planning commission has adopted bylaws um, and we're now just working with all the individual zoning boards, but we expect to have that ready by the next meeting on November 30th. Very good. Hey, board members have anything else? Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Terry Atwell, move to adjourn. No second. Jason Cooper. Jason Cooper, second. All right. Hey, all members in favor of adjourning, aye. 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 Thank you, Donna. Have a good night. You're welcome. Thanks. See y'all.